So, hello. Thank you uh, for the organizers for having invited me. Although I'm a, I'm a kind of a cheap uh, speaker because I I play at home. So, I'm, my home town is Lisbon, so it's not very expensive to bring me here. Uh, so. Um, my first slide for the usual disclosures. I have another s disclosure. I work for 27 years on synovial tissue and early arthritis, so even before I was a rheumatology resident, so this is a strong bias in terms of the uh, way I see the, the usefulness of uh, synovial tissue. So it's a, se a second disclosure that I have to, to make. So it will be a very quick presentation, and I will focus uh, on uh, the ways we can have nowadays to get synovial tissue. Although we still have the opportunity of making closed biopsies and surgical biopsies, uh, it makes sense nowadays that we uh, stick uh, to two techniques that are not uh, comparable directly, which is mini arthroscopy and ultrasound guided biopsy. And I will allude to uh, these two techniques very briefly and uh, the presentation will have, in fact, at the end, a list of references that we've built uh, in the EULAR uh, courses on synovial tissue over the last two years. So those that are technically more interested uh, in having access to detail on how the techniques are done, please ignore the, 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 the slides and use the papers that I will refer and allude to uh, in the f uh, final aspect of the presentation. So. The, the ultrasound-guided synovial biopsy uh, is done uh, under uh, a sepsi, uh, as it, it was the technique uh, previously used uh, uh, with the parker pearson biopsy, so the, the, the principles of the technique in terms of a sepsi is, is exactly the same. Also, uh, d there is the need for joint aspiration and need for uh, the use of uh, an, an anesthetic. And then the, the way we push uh, the needle is a little bit the same, in fact, for those that were used to, to use the, the, the Parker Pearson, but it's completely different, the, the gorge, the, 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 the thickness of the needle, and, and also the fact that it's guided by uh, uh, ultrasound. So the equipment uh, is, in fact, not uh, very different from a closed uh, biopsy. The way the needle is used uh, and, the, and the type of needle is completely different, as you can see and it goes like that uh, uh, inside the joint, guided by ultrasound, uh, using um, a, a very, 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 very small uh, cutting part in the needle, meaning that the most difficult part can be, in fact, remove the piece uh, of the biopsy synovial tissue, which is uh, sometimes a little bit irritating, but that's probably the, the most tricky part for those that are uh, um, uh, familiar with the, the ultrasound and ultrasound-guided procedures. Then, depending on the way you work, but I'm telling you how we do at our center, you, you might have the need to collect tissue uh, for clinical purposes and also for research purposes. So we follow always this uh, path. So we have four to five uh, fragments for microbiology, five to six fragments to pathology, and then two research and to the biobank, uh, four fragments of paraffin, uh, RNA later, and frozen in OCT, all four fragments. So it makes a lot of fragments, <laughs> but uh, it's, it's very tiny. It's very tiny, the, the, each piece of, of synovial tissue that we collect. So, of course, there are some risks, at least theoretical, when uh, we do invasive procedures. There, there, there is the risk of a, a mild discomfort of pain, a vagal crisis, post-biopsy pain. This has been carefully analyzed in several recently published papers by several groups and, ver uh, and several collaborative uh, works between several centers that do this, this technique, and we are very sure that in terms of safety, we are playing uh, on the safe side without any doubts. Of course, also from a theoretical pr uh, um, 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 perspective and, and also very, very uncommon, uh, you might have uh, the risk of a neurovascular lesion, bleeding, hematosis, or infection. But this is absolutely uh, uh, rare and, and, and uh, completely outside the, the, the daily practice. The other way of getting synovial tissue is through mini arthroscopy. Mini arthroscopy has been developed uh, for uh, several uh, years. It has been uh, included in the practice of a few European rheumatology centers. Please, those that are not rheumatologists, please note that this is not 
arthroscopy as it is used by the orthopedic surgeons. So it is not for therapeutic purposes. It is essentially for diagnostic purposes, although there is also joint lavage, which has an effect, a positive effect upon the joint, as we all know. But the, the technique and the, the way it is used, and above all, uh, the thickness uh, of, of, the, of the equipment that is introduced in the joint is completely different from the orthopedic use, okay? So uh, the, the advantage uh, f from, from a, uh, a comparison that we can make uh, uh, with the ultrasound-guided biopsy is that by using mini-arthroscopy, we have synovial visualization, so it's a little bit like the gastroenterology now. So we see the joint, we see the synovial tissue. For those that, that work with a, um, a joint inflammatory disease, this is very exciting to, to see what we have there. It helps a lot on biopsy guidance with a further gain in terms of, uh, of uh, comparison uh, with the, 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 the ultrasound-guided biopsy because it is better guidance uh, here. The, the, the quality of the guidance is, is, is higher. We have the possibility of having joint lavage, and also we can give corticoids locally. Of course, after a joint biopsy, we can also do that, but as uh, most commonly the procedure is done in smaller joints with the ultrasound-guided uh, biopsy, it can be a little bit uh, uh, more difficult to uh, proceed with the, the, the introduction of the corticoid. Sometimes you get the corticoid outside the joint, which is not the case when we do the arthroscopy in the knee. So it's, it's safer from the perspective of having, for instance, exosetunid uh, going out of the joint, which sometimes gets uh, into a, a smaller um, secondary effect of um, pain, etc., uh, in the tissue, and sometimes discoloration and atrophy of the skin. So um, disadvantages, disadvantages, of course, this is an expensive device. It can cost around the cost of a high-quality ultrasound device, which can be used for many purposes. And here we, ha we have a device that is only used for this. It's time-consuming, so it takes more time to make a mini arthroscopy than an ultrasound-guided biopsy. And it is technically more complex. So for those that are very familiar with ultrasound-guided procedures, getting into the sign of your biopsy is relatively easy, but to get into the mini arthroscopy, it needs a, a, a proper training, and uh, it's, it's more difficult to get into the technique. Just to show that it is truly minimally invasive, you see here uh, the two very tiny holes. The, the patient goes uh, home at, at, the, at the same day, so it's minimally invasive. It can give you very interesting images, such as the ones that are here, for instance, on, uh, on the, the, the right-hand side of the panel, the vascularity of a rheumatoid arthritis patient in comparison with the normal synovial tissue. Uh, in this case, for instance, you see um, a patient with a, a, an oligoarthritis that is still undiagnosed and that uh, eventually uh, um, evolved into a rheumatoid arthritis. But you see the, the vessels that look very straight. You see these vessels, very straight vessels that you see here. It can be observed in patients that evolve into rheumatoid arthritis. Also, in this case, the synovial tissue is also very uh, typical of what we can foresee uh, uh, in a, a rheumatoid arthritis patient in terms of uh, uh, the inflammatory uh, characteristics with uh, lymphoid aggregates and also increase in vascularization, as you can see. On the other hand, um, uh, uh, another case with uh, an oligoarthritis and diagnosis, and you see the, the vessels. Again, uh, there is a pattern that some patients with psoriatic arthritis show and can be uh, very elegantly um, evidenced by the mini arthroscopy. You see these vessels that look like proliferating around. Uh, and also in the sign of your tissue, you see the same pattern, an increase uh, in the number of vessels that you see around here uh, and less lymphoid infiltrate as compared with a rheumatoid arthritis patient. Of course, this is not diagnostic. Unfortunately, we cannot use this kind of synovial patterns to diagnose because you do have many patients with rheumatoid arthritis that don't show these or psoriatic arthritis patients that don't show these. And on the contrary, you can also have patients with osteoarthritis with an inflammatory component that also show these kind of patterns. 
Here you see crystals in the arthroscopy, and, and then the synovial biopsy show exactly these crystals. You can use also synovial tissue for the, 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 the helping hand in the diagnosis of uh, infection uh, inside the joint, so the, the pattern of, uh, of um, the synovial tissue change with a, a neutrophilic infiltration, and it helps also uh, in the isolation and documentation of uh, a bacteria. Um, clinical pictures such as this one, the lipoma arborescence is also very uh, classically shown by a bio biopsy, also pigmented villar nodular synovitis, synovial sarcoma, so this is the classic. But what we want is a little bit more than that, of course, with synovial tissue, and, uh, and, and the two other speakers will go behind this, uh, is to get not only into microscopy analysis, but going into protein analysis, transcript analysis, that might help us to go a little bit further, because at this moment we know that from a, a, a group analysis, meaning that as a mean, rheumatoid arthritis patients have a pattern, psoriatic arthritis patients have a pattern, but we can't diagnose a patient by a biopsy. And the hope is that going a little bit behind this, we can uh, have more information um, in the system. Although we still have uh, many uh, aspects to clarify, there are already, I, I think most of you know, clinical trials that work uh, with synovial tissue. So not only based in the clinical outcomes of patients, but also looking at the outcome of the synovial tissue after treatment intervention. This can be useful for the characterization of the mechanism of action, but also it's useful to predict the response to treatment. And we know that at least we've gained over the last 20 years a very powerful surrogate endpoint for a good response to treatment, which is the level of CD68 um, positive macrophages. So the decrease of this marker is associated with a good response to treatment. So we do have something palpable at this moment. But the, the expectation is that we grow uh, in the knowledge in synovial tissue and we can go further and use synovial tissue analysis for clinical practice. It isn't true at this moment that we can do that, but I do believe that we'll do that in the future. So this is the list of papers that uh, were published uh, in Frontiers uh, in Medicine, just related with the first and second course uh, on synovial tissue organized by uh, ULAR. This is open access and you can have here all the descriptions of the techniques involved and also uh, how to analyze tissue, etc., etc. So I think this is useful for those that are technically interested on that. I have to uh, give my thanks, of course, uh, to the team that has worked at my place uh, in synovial tissue. Uh, in fact, most of the, of the techniques that, that we used uh, nowadays were uh, uh, the, the product uh, of the training in two centers, one in Amsterdam, mini arthroscopy, and uh, ultrasound guided um, synovial biopsy uh, in London uh, with the uh, Constantin Pizzalis group and uh, Francis Ambi that will uh, speak after us. And uh, for those that are interested in, on, on these techniques, uh, I'll leave my email there and we are happy to receive people and, and share our experience uh, in these techniques. So thank you very much.